Up to 60 merchant ships navigate the frozen waters of the Great Lakes, and the Mackinac cannot protect them all. Ten additional icebreakers share the duty. Two Canadian vessels, three buoy tenders, and five Bay-class icebreaking tugs work as a team to keep all the Great Lakes open to shipping. The U.S. Coast Guard also looks to the skies for help. Because when breaking ice, a straight line is not always the best route. The H-65 Dolphin helicopters lift ice advisors from the ships. Once aloft, they relay course information back to the captains. When you're on the bridge of the cutter, you can only see so far. Being able to climb to 1,000 or 2,000 feet, we can give them a better idea of where they should go to hit the open water. That would be a, a much less arduous task than breaking through all the hard stuff. They are our eyes in the sky. If we're working in a lake environment such as this, um, we could be working uh, a mile or two miles away from a great open water lead and not nail it. But today, the air crew has spotted an enormous ice sheet, blocking the route under the Mackinac Bridge at the northern tip of Lake Huron. The ice-breaking tug Katmai Bay has been called on to clear the potentially dangerous flow. If the ship was traveling through that area and happened to get stuck, it is possible that that sheet could break loose and start carrying the ship with it anywhere it goes. If the ship is stuck, it's at the mercy of nature, and the wind's blowing it, it could blow it onto a shoal or into some other hazard of navigation. The Bay-class tugs are the most technologically sophisticated icebreakers on the Great Lakes. But for this task, brute force and an experienced crew are all that is necessary. Sometimes we find a pressure ridge, a large wind row that we are unable to just break through on the first time. We have to employ a backing and ramming maneuver. And we'll, we'll take the ship and we'll back up in the track that we just established, anywhere from two to three ship lengths. And then we'll come ahead again and we'll use the backing ability of the ship to keep it in the straightest line as possible. Backing up on the ice can pose a problem for normal non-ice-breaking ships. If a fragment were to jam the rudder, the ship would turn out of control. Icebreakers like the Katmai Bay have rudders which are braced at both the top and bottom. An underwater protrusion called an ice horn shields the rudder and helps the ship break ice when moving backwards. Wind-blown ice, like that found under the Mackinac Bridge, can stack and fold over on itself, creating pressure ridges up to 20 feet thick. The ship will have to back and ram many times to get through this extremely tough ice. Fortunately, the Bay-class ships have other weapons at their disposal. Hull lubrication, or bubbler systems, helps clear the ice from around the ships. Air is expelled through holes below the waterline. The bubbles which are generated force their way up through the ice, causing it to weaken. Once the ship has broken through the pack ice, the specially designed bow and powerful prop wash create wave action in the surrounding water. The ripple effect causes the ice to flex and break apart. The Coast Guard needs these technological tricks. By the end of the season, it has spent over 4,600 hours assisting more than 500 trapped ships, any one of which could have become a financial disaster, or worse, a human tragedy. But the icebreakers and their crews keep the waters safe. One of the things that makes this such a great ship is the crew. They're the ones that do all the hard work. Without a doubt, they're, they're, they're a bunch of can-do coasties. For icebreakers, the Great Lakes are a microcosm 